Is it recording? Hey guys. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Nice to see you all again. Um, here today we're going to talk about color analysis and how it relates to um, wearing blonde hair. So today I've invited Athena <laughs> from Greece to join Hi. the call. <laughs> and also Kylie, she is from Kansas in the US. And then also we have Jessica who is from Canada. And we're actually going to have a discussion today about, you know, how to deal with blonde hair if you sh if you want to go blonde, the process of going blonde as we have our blonde resident expert, which is Kylie. Uh, she's a hairstylist and, you know, Jessica is always uh, changing her hair color and so is Athena. So uh, I thought it would be a good idea to have this little chat with you guys. So um, Kylie, can you tell us a little bit more about like the kind of questions that clients ask you when going blonde, please? Sure, yeah. Um, lots of times I, I have clients who are brunette come in and want to go start the process to go blonde. Um, definitely depending on whether or not they have natural virgin brown hair or if it's previously colored, um, it will dramatically determine the direction we go, especially in the first session, because lots of times I encourage my clients who want to be blonde that it will take multiple sessions and hundreds of dollars, um, not only to get there, but also to maintain the color. Um, and so typically, if somebody does have a um, permanent hair color that is darker on their hair, then their hair will go through a process of um, having to lift that warmth out because um, when you deposit color, it's typically on the orangey red side. And then in order to bleach it out, you have to remove that pigment. And so not only that, but also naturally dark brunettes, they, their underlying pigment is typically an orangey red as well. And so in order to lift their hair all the way to a level 10, which is pale blonde, you have to go through an entire process of lifting out the red and the orange and the yellow to get all the way up to white blonde. And so for a lot of clients, a white blonde not only isn't achievable, but it's also not healthy for their hair. So lots of times we'll kind of figure out either a game plan. I'll usually encourage them because I am a lived in hair colorist that we can give them something that is dimensional, but also going to maintain brightness and also is going to maintain hair health. And so there's a lot of factors that go into determining blonde because ultimately blonde is overprocessed hair. <laughs> Oh, at the, at the base of yeah, at the at the end of the day, that's what blonde hair is. It's hair that's been lifted. All of the pigment has been removed from inside the cuticle, the hair follicle, and then um, you get nothing like light. So that's the process of how you remove the pigment from the hair to get blonde. Now, what if like there's someone like myself who has like gray hairs and huh. <laughs> or my hair? This is my natural. It has grays. <laughs> and also someone like Athena, <laughs> who also <laughs> same issue. Um, so should we let our gray grow out and then you can make us go blonde or how does that work? So lots of times uh, uh, when a client has dark hair like that and wants to go blonde, my compromise will often be to create a color that has um, a gradient. So if you have dark hair on the roots and you have grays, but you want to cover those grays, then we will keep your, you know, your color at the roots, um, but maybe focus the blonde toward the ends so that as the, your hair grows out and you can cover your grays, you can also can maintain the blonde hair that's down here. Um, but you have you to know, strip all this color basically, just like you explained, right? But you're yeah, so do you keep the gray? No, no. So if you have, if you have, um, so you have permanent color on your hair, correct? Uh, yes. Like Single you cover the gray. Uh huh. So basically, <laughs> what I would do is I would continue to apply dark color at your root. Oh. But then work this in the ends, adding some some bright pops of dimension with blonde. But with your hair, I would not probably be able to get anywhere near my level or Jessica's level within several sessions, especially if there's dark 
buildup of color already on your hundreds head. of dollars, like you said. Okay, so we <laughs> yes, get that. So yes. you would <laughs> suggest like highlights or something because you know, like Americans in the U.S., like um, Asian American, they have like blonde highlight. They're all California, basically mm-hmm. they have blonde mm-hmm. highlights. So is that what they're doing? They're kind of just putting highlights instead of like stripping their hair entirely blonde. So. When you use highlights, you, mm-hmm. you typically use bleach, which bleach is what removes the pigment. And so you're still using stripping, if you will, um, removing that pigment from the hair. That's mm-hmm. the way that you get the hair to be lighter. That's so interesting. Okay. So if you could just tell us a little bit more about like your hair color versus like Jessica's hair color for blonde. Yeah. Uh, so um, uh, I'm somebody who... I would say Jessica's hair is cooler than mine. Um, Jessica, do you use purple shampoo? Ooh. Yeah, I just did a couple of days ago because I was finding it was getting a bit yellow. And I've got an appointment tomorrow to freshen everything up. But I wanted that white blonde back. So I used a purple shampoo again. Mm-hmm. I don't use it. Like, I use it maybe once every couple of weeks when I feel like I need to. Okay. Yeah, I can tell almost immediately when my clients come in having used purple shampoo because it does a great job. You know, it's a helps remove the yellow from the hair. But if clients have any orange pigment in their hair, which would be considered like a level seven, eight, um, your hair right now is a level 10, nine, 10. Um, if there is any orange in there, then the purple wouldn't be enough. We would be blue. And so there are blue shampoos on the market for those women who have maybe brunette hair, but we only were able to lift them to an, a warmer orange. They could still have an ashy color, but they would use blue shampoo. Um, The one difference, though, is that if you're not lifting the hair high enough, then typically if you're trying to make the color darker or try to make the color cooler, then it's going to appear darker. So warm blondes appear brighter. Cool blondes appear darker. Um, It's based off of what we use, um, our toner formulations. Uh, Typically violet and blue they deposit darker whereas I typically as a hairstylist even though I um, want somebody to be cool I still want them to be bright and gold creates a so I always use gold in a formula just to make sure that it looks shiny and bright instead of dull and flat from just using purple and blue Oh, so is that why there's some cool blondes that have some yellowish still in their hair? Is it because of the washing out and whatever you just explained? Yeah, so typically, I mean, any cool blonde isn't isn't naturally cool. So we're using we're using toners to re- to neutralize the yellow in the hair to make it cool. So as that toner fades, the hair turns more yellow. And in Jessica's case, she was feeling that way, so she used purple shampoo to try to remove, to cancel out that yellow. Okay, so you're telling me Reese Witherspoon's blonde hair is not real blonde. Really? It's, well, <laughs> it's, uh, what, her hair probably looks yellow when she, when they lift all the pigment out and then they tone it something that's going to make it cooler. Oh, okay. So she wasn't <laughs> It's a science. Blonde? What's that? What'd Sorry. She wasn't oh, born I just said, blonde? Some people are born blonde. Yes. Uh huh. I, I like born blonde. I think like I my um like relatives are all Dutch and like in Holland there's so many white blonde children. But as they get older, it does go to like yellow blonde, and then they you've yellow got to tone blonde. it if you want that white blonde. So mm-hmm. does it get to be Kylie's hair color, which is a mousy brown up here? I mean, were you blonde also when you were young? I was white blonde when I was oh, no. a kid. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I meant Kylie, though. Were you also white blonde when you were young? Sorry, Jessica. I have have been um, blonde, partially because of the sun. You know, being a kid outside in the sun, your hair, the sun will bleach your, your natural hair color. And so lots of times you'll see these kids with beautiful, like, bright money pieces around their face, like blonde pieces because they've been wearing their hair back. And so the sun's hitting that part and then they pull it down and it's like bleached from the sun, blonde highlights. Um, I was not ever, I've definitely gotten darker as I've gotten older, but I was never platinum. Like, what do you call it? Um, uh Go ahead, sorry. 
A toe head. That's what they call it. A toe head. A toe head. Somebody who is born with bleach blonde hair. Do you know this term, Jessica? I don't. <laughs> I've never heard of a toe head. <laughs> is it a Kansas thing? <laughs> I don't know if it's a Kansas thing, but I've definitely heard people like, oh, that's, she's a toe head because toe they're head. just so white blonde. Okay, Reese Witherspoon is a toe head. Okay, so going back to you, Jessica, when you were a baby, you said you were white blonde hair. And then, so we, I think, determined that your skin is also warmer, correct? Or is it just because it's the summer right now? Yeah, I'm definitely more cool in the winter, but in the summer I have like, it's, I'm a bit more tanned like up here. Um, I still look and I, like, I feel like very white, very pale, but- You're, saying you're very tan here. I mean- I'm I know, my, my, the rest of me always gets more tan than my face. Okay, so you purposely like try to not tan your face basically. Oh, I'd love for it to tan, but it doesn't really tan. I just get freckles and a bit red and- it doesn't get that tanned. <laughs> okay, so I would definitely say that you're still cool in the skin. So your blonde hair has always been this um, color blonde, basically, right? Uh, and then sometimes it gets warmer, so go ahead. Yeah, like I was always white blonde as a child, and then over the years it's got darker and darker. Um, it's it's like an ash blonde. Yeah. It's like a, a dark blonde. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, that ash way. blonde, uh-huh. Um, and I how I have it right now, for most of my adult life, it's been blonde, like all over. And I love that. Like, I love how I look blonde like that. I feel very confident like that, but it's also very high maintenance and very expensive. So the last couple of times, um, my stylist did the balayage, however you pronounce mm -hmm. it. So it is like a bit more kind of blended out. So mm -hmm. I don't have to keep going back like every three weeks, as soon as I see the roots growing out. Oh, but cool. Stay. But when she does it, it is like that crisp white blonde. And then as the weeks go on, it does get more and more yellow. So that's when I use the purple shampoo. But I've also overused purple shampoo where I used it every time I washed my hair and it went like gray purple. And people were asking me like, oh, are you going for that trend of like having gray hair? And I'm like, no, I'm really not. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> not okay so Kylie's hair we were um, talking earlier it looks like a little bit more a little bit golden blonde down here is that correct would you care or actually some of it is warm some of it's cool would you yeah that so that's that's kind of how the process is going right of lifting it I've this is probably the coolest blonde my hair's ever been actually oh, really okay mm -hmm. but I feel like on the other side oh you said the lighting in your house is warm which is why like, yeah I have a warm, warm. light but, uh, okay Cause like, I feel like it looks a little bit cool now that you're doing that piecing your hair out a little bit. So, mm -hmm. but it's not as like, um, light of a blonde. So what level of blonde are you at versus Jess is at 10? You're at, um, my, my blonde color is, it is a nine, 10 probably. Um, right. my okay. natural root is a seven, eight or seven, okay. six, seven. Sorry. But she's Jess is definitely a 10, like straight off. Her blonde on her ends, yes. yes. Uh -huh. That's okay. so a ten, level 10 blonde is when you basically are removing all of the pigment. You've made, you've made it to what we call a banana peel, inside of a banana peel yellow. So very okay. light yellow. Light yellow. Oh, even and though then she's, then she's toned it with violet. So she's neutralized that warm. Yellow. And that's what okay. creates the cool blonde. Gotcha. Okay. So Jess, do you want to be this cool blonde all the time? I know you change your hair a lot. So let's talk about your different hair changes, especially as, as it goes with your skin tone. <laughs> I do prefer being more cool, like more of a white blonde than a yellow blonde. Mm -hmm. um, but in the winter, I've because my skin is so pale in the winter, it's like it's like this white blonde hair, white face. It just looks so blah to me. And that's when my stylist will add in darker highlights or like low lights to just give it a bit more, like more dimension. And just, so it's not just all like one big canvas of the same kind of color. So like mousy brown, or is that what she's going to put in it? Like an ash, ash blonde? The last time she, it, there was a lot of warmth in it actually. And I liked how it looked and it looked, and I usually stay away from warm tones in my hair, but I actually really liked how it looked. Okay. So as a stylist, yeah. from, so when you have porous, so there's, so when you, when you lift all the color out of the blonde hair, um, 
you basically, in your hair follicle, there's a bunch of holes. So if you were to add a dark color back into your hair, you have to fill it with warm. And so the warm molecules fill the hair. And if you were to just put a cool brown in like on a piece of your porous white blonde hair, it will be blue or it'll be a very muddy color because once again, you're basically, if you're stripping away that warm, you have to add it back in. So in order to go darker, you have to add those yellow, orange, missing pigments back into your hair for it to not look like it's flat or depleted because there's so many holes in your hair. So does it show um, in the mixing of the formula, like when you mix the colors together, like do you have to carefully, I don't know, measure and like, yes, okay, you're telling yeah. me. Yeah, so I'll lots of times add for like a low, so somebody who is, um, and that's kind of what I have to tell people is if I'm adding, that's why being warm, a warmer blonde is easier because naturally our hair not only fades warm, right? Because um, it's, you know, we're lifting it. There's underlying pigment in our hair that is warm inherently. And so it's easier to be a warm blonde because it, you're able to create more. A cool blonde is, is limited because their hair not only is porous, but in order to go any other shade, you have to add that warmth back in. And lots of times clients who are obsessed with being cool toned really don't like that. They don't like that I have to add warmth in in order to even make it look like I did anything to their hair. But it's a process, as you explained, right? So yes, just don't like when you have to have warm in your hair, right? So I yeah. understand why your stylist that added, added highlights, highlights to, your hair, to your hair because otherwise it wouldn't have stayed in your hair. So what would you say to someone who, like, one of the stylists that I've had, so right now, like I said, like, it is, like, balayage, it's faded out, but she did it where, like, she painted the darker color on top to about here, and it it was, like, giving me a lot of options for letting it grow out for a while before I needed it redone. And I got a lot of compliments on it. People thought it looked good because it was more of my natural color out here. But I didn't feel confident in it. I was like, it's too dark. It looks brown to me. I feel most confident and most myself as being blonde. But yet everyone thought I looked better the other way. Like, what What would you say to that? Do you, what would, what do you consider, like, what's your color analysis? What would you say? Um, I'm warm and cool. So, like, wash okay. tinted and clear. Okay. Do you, like, so that shirt, that pink shirt that you're wearing right now, do you, tend to go more toward the warmer pinks? Uh, this is more bright just because I like I, I love bright like neon vibrant colors and that's kind of like my personality too. So even that like brights, wash tinted, clear, any of those colors in those range. So if you're wearing those bright colors more often, I would suggest wearing your hair darker because you'll have more contrast. Ooh, okay. Darker like, so, what do you mean darker? With the mouth? Darker of- as in not dark, but you know, creating more contrast between your eyes and your hair color would support you wearing those brighter colors more. You mean like more like your blonde hair color than the one that she has? I would say, you know, if she were, if she were wanting to create something that had, you know, something more similar to her root, like she was explaining that gave her more options, but was more natural through here, had a darker base, but then maybe some dimension where there were like little pops of highlight, but it was laying on top of something dark oh, that could create okay. a lot more contrast in your hair and then also it would support those bright colors that you like to wear with your light blue eyes okay that's helpful thank you yeah. <laughs> so purely from taking this from a color analysis expert without actually looking though at um knowing much about hair i've learned a lot in this like last few <laughs> minutes from you um i would have told Je- recommended jessica more like a warmer blonde though so would that like since you've taken the course also kylie would that be okay or what do you think yeah i definitely think if you if are you- more warm toned and you like wearing the bright colors then you know, as Michelle would have taught us, like warmer blonde hair probably like complements that better than cooler blonde. I think also it depends on um, the like time of year too, because obviously you're more tan in the summer. So maybe in the summer you could be a little bit more warmer blonde or maybe have like a cool and warm at the same time. And then in the winter you could go more of that 
um, cooler blonde, except have the dimension that uh, Kylie talked about, which is like some dark with some light. Would that be a good assessment? I know I'm asking. Yeah. Her, yeah. <laughs> it's, I, I do think so. I think, I think the reason why a lot of women go darker in the fall and the winter, or at least add more um, dimension via low lights is because they, the contrast in the hair kind of distracts from maybe the contrast that you lack in your face when you're lighter color in, in the winter. So I think it helps to balance everything out um, versus, you know, having white, very pale skin, light hair, feeling washed out, already feeling like you're missing the sun, you know, um, but having more dimension and lighter, light reflection in your hair. Okay, awesome. So Jess, do you have any other comments to ask um, about the blonde before we go to Athena? Yes, one question. So when I'm looking at someone and I'm assessing them, um, like as we talked about, I've seen brunettes that bleach their hair blonde, but to me, it just looks yellow. Like it looks so yellow. It's not toned. It's They haven't got it to that white blonde stage yet. So there's them. And then we've got you that compared to me, looks like more of a warmer blonde. Then there's me that's more of a white blonde, but then there's like platinum blonde that's a lot more white blonde compared to my hair. So when Whiter you're thinking of you, is it really true, Kylie? Whiter than her? <laughs> at the at the root, probably. Oh, okay, at the root. Okay. Yeah. So if I'm looking at all of them, because like you on your own, it could look like, oh, it's ashy blonde, but then compared to other ones, it's mm -hmm. more of a warm blonde. So like how do we really make that accurate analysis? Um, do your, what are your clients, to, are they asking you for advice on like what color hair to wear and that's what you're asking me then? Or what, sorry, can you repeat your question? Just, so just looking at them and really assessing like, is this more of a warm blonde or a cool blonde? Oh, when analyzing like hair, skin, eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think too, having the, I will answer your question, having the perspective of knowing the hair can change is helpful for me because I can give them that advice so I can see why you'd want to ask that. Um, I mean, I would say if they are, I guess it depends on what they want to wear, right? So mm -hmm. if they are more attracted to the cooler tones and they have warm hair, then you would want to obviously direct them go, to go more cool and w use blue shampoo or purple shampoo or whatever would help. Um, or tone it that direction. Um, lots of times I'll ask my clients like what they're more attracted to. Like genuinely, do you prefer this? And I, I want to give you an accurate assessment, but I want you to be a, a, like a, a contributor in this, right? right? It's your wardrobe. You're going to be <laughs> wearing these clothes. So like, this is a great opportunity for you to decide. Like, are you, if you're warm and cool, well, do you want to wear more warm or do you want to wear more cool? Because depending on what they answer, will help you determine a better path for them with their hair. Their hair is probably the hair and like you can, you can tan, right? But, and you, you can wear contacts. So really anything can change, but like, I will ask them first, maybe like what they are more attracted to out of these options to give them the opportunity to help you determine <laughs> what should be best for them. Okay, yeah. that is so helpful. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, of course. Hopefully, you know, also we'll discuss during the course too, like uh, how to assess the warm and cool blonde, but at least that gives you a better understanding, right? Whether you need to advise your client to go warmer or cooler, hopefully, right? Okay. Yeah. So let's go to you, Athena, who likes to wear blonde yes. hair. However, you like, you have dark hair and you were born <laughs> with dark hair. Yes. Uh, right now I have um, uh, dark hair, but uh, for uh, many years, I had uh, white uh, blonde hair for about uh, 15 years. Uh, all uh, told me that uh, the color was amazing and uh, I liked it very much. Uh, but uh, the last uh, two years I have my natural hair. Uh, but uh, I would uh, like to have again uh, blonde hair, blonde hair. 
Okay, so let's first assess Athena's coloring. Is she warm or cool to you guys for her skin? I see it's some very warm cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> yes, because uh, always uh, I look um, uh, pale uh, on the screen, so I put uh, blush. But is she correct? I would say she is warm. Do you see that, Jess, in her skin that she's warm too? Yeah, like a light peachy. Yeah, kind of peachy, like ivory on this part with peachy here. Okay, so that's good. So now that we have our hairstylist here, <laughs> what would you recommend a good hair color for her to be since she has warm skin? Are you going to ask her first, do you prefer warm colors or cool colors? I'm excited. Well, I was going to, I mean, I can, I think your eyes are brown. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are they dark brown? Uh, medium brown, medium brown. Medium brown. And your hair it looks... Would you say your hair is more warm or cool in color versus uh, brown? Warm, uh, chocolate brown. Chocolate brown. Okay. So your eyes are golden brown or ash brown? I think they're golden brown. Uh, golden brown. Okay. Medium brown we don't use, but anyway, that's fine. <laughs> okay, so golden brown. So essentially, her coloring is warm, correct? So yes. what would you tell her then? When you were blonde. Were you a warmer blonde or a cooler blonde? Uh, cool. Very cool. Like platinum did you, blonde. How did it make you feel when you were wearing blonde hair? Like how did how did you feel as far as confidence and things like that? Yes, then, but uh, the last years I I don't uh, I didn't feel very well with this, with the white uh, blonde hair. So okay. yeah, one thing you could do that might give you the best of both worlds is to keep you keep your hair more on the chocolatey brown side, but then around your face you could lighten it up and around your ends, you could lighten it up so that everything around your face is blonde, but you still have a lot of your natural hair in the back. Um, that would give you the, the, you would get to feel, you know, the personality of a blonde, right? But you would not have as much maintenance. And um, I think that, that blonde around your face would, should probably be warm. Or at least warm blonde. Okay. Or at least neutral. Neutral yes. blonde. Interesting. Okay. So what's a neutral blonde? Is it on your hair right now? <laughs> so yeah, neutral would be. I mean, I rarely tone people just cool, right? Because I mentioned that it it oftentimes turns darker, or it doesn't have reflect in the hair. It's not shiny, um, because it really is just neutral, neutralizing the warmth, and so. When I think of a neutral blonde, I think of somebody who has mostly cool in like we're neutralizing the blonde, the the warm tones, but we're adding then the gold reflect back in so that it still has the shine. Whereas a golden blonde would be somebody who um, is mostly honey, like think of honey tones. Um, and I think those blondes were intentionally making them warm. We're adding warmth to the warm blonde that is already exposed when you lift blonde hair mm -hmm. but a neutral would be kind of okay i'm adding i'm adding the the necessary pigment to neutralize the blonde but i'm also adding some gold back in so that you have that reflect okay so actually thank you Athena actually, can I mention Athena? So she has gray hair too. I think all, a lot of us do. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, it's good okay. for people to understand how we to color gray hair. <laughs> it's good to understand how people color gray hair. So, you know, uh, so there's the maintenance back here to color it then her original hair color, which would be a warm brown. But then you're saying to add gold and blonde here. So it's, is, a, is that a lot of maintenance? I mean, how does it deal with the gray? Yeah, so a client of mine who who has gray hair and is darker, like Athena's color, I think we usually work on a process where I'm not bringing the blonde all the way up to the roots, but we're kind of keeping it in this area here so that 
oh, okay. as I'm putting fresh permanent color to cover the grays, I'm only having to touch up this piece of blonde once every two or three appointments. So it grows out more naturally and you're still able to get that color or that um, gray coverage, but you're giving yourself a more lived in option that saves money, but also gives you a result that you come back, you feel better because your grays are covered always, right? <laughs> but <Always>. you have, <laughs> you're, you're kind of growing with the color and then we bring it back up and then we grow it out again. And it's kind of this process of um, keeping it lower maintenance and just doing tweaks here and there to, to continue to, to create dimension, but mm -hmm. it's not a higher maintenance service. Like we're boiling your entire hair with blonde hair, with bleach. So Jess, since you've taken the course, okay, and you let's evaluate Athena. So basically she's got warm skin and then she also was born with warm hair. So if she wanted to color her hair blonde, what did you learn from the course that, what would you advise her as, you know, from, based on color analysis in the course, not from a hairstylist perspective? <laughs> if she wanted to color her hair blonde, blonde. like what that would yeah. do for changing her color yeah, analysis? Yeah, in terms of giving color, uh, like basic, no, not changing her color analysis, just advising her on like what kind of blonde she should go. What would you do based on what you learned from the class? That's a good question because I had a question before answering this. I, I was actually wondering like when I look at her, her eyebrows and hair, like that warmth in them almost looks like there's a bit of redness to me. So I was also wondering if like a strawberry blonde would be an option where it's not like a bleach blonde or like blonde just here, but like an overall lighter color that they won't be like as dark as it starts to grow out. I'm not the hair expert, but that was an, something that I thought of. That's a good idea. I would agree with that. And then also if she has gray hair, isn't that lower maintenance too? If she were to kind of make herself strawberry blonde, Kylie asking you. <laughs> Yeah, the unfortunate That's reality of being a hairstylist is we have to break a lot of dreams because for somebody who has a natural base of level five, we would have to almost bleach her entire hair to to give her a a strawberry blonde because when you part this part here all of it yeah all of it because a strawberry blonde lies at about a level. Um, seven, eight. So um, a very medium blonde, and we have those warmer tones in there. But unfortunately, in order to use, when you use permanent color, the way that you are lifting the cuticle and there, the warmth is exposed, you're basically doing what's called a base bump. So when, so Michelle deposits color on her roots, like you are strictly depositing dark color, which is easy to do because it not only covers your grace, but it also, <laughs> it, well, it's easy it as far as a hairstylist is concerned because oh, yes. it's Definitely. like, I 100% like love when my clients say, I want to just be darker or I want to be the same level, but cover my grace. It's when clients desire, honest, blonde is hard because when you are working with that much underlying pigment, the chances of it turning out the way that you actually want are very slim and the maintenance would actually be way more because we would not only have to bleach her roots, but also we would have to then deposit color back in. Um, it it's, I wish it were that easy. Like I think people think it's just, Oh, put, just put strawberry blonde on my hair. Right. <laughs> and that's what we do. And it's so much more complicated than that. And so, from a hair, the reason I, I suggested that with Athena's hair is because it's it's giving her the option. It's from a hairstyle's perspective, going to be what we want it to be versus hoping for the best and hoping that it will be something great, so but probably it won't. Less maintenance yes. than all blonde. So Athena, yes. when your hair was all blonde, was it a lot of maintenance? How often did you have to go to the hairstylist? Um, I every week, yes. every two weeks yes. to go when your hair was blonde. Every three weeks, three weeks, three weeks, and uh, but uh, the color was amazing. The, the, uh, then, now I don't uh, like uh, this color. Uh, 
I think that uh, when I was younger, uh, platinum blonde, uh, it, it was okay for me. It was uh, very uh, sparkling and uh, it was great, but uh, not for now. Okay, so we change our minds except for me. Same hair color, same hairstyle. At least it's back in style, guys. <laughs> I noticed Kim Kardashian went really short. I was like, oh, good. I'm trending now, at least for my hairstyle. <laughs> so, um, okay. So that's good to know that people change over time. And you guys gave a lot of points. So for basically a client like Athena, I think both of us, Jess and I learned a lot. Actually, she learned a lot too from you, Kylie. So now I know that whoever's watching this video, you need to contact Kylie directly. Okay. We're going to put her Instagram and like uh -huh. schedule a consultation with her for her hair. Because if you see a color consultant, we're going to say one thing, like Jess and I would think that, you know, Athena would look good with strawberry blonde hair, except I do think you look nice with your warm brown hair like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. For someone like me, I would never <laughs> recommend putting blonde except for maybe highlights. Is that correct? Highlights? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, even with the gray hair, because you said you had to strip and all that, but whatever. Um, and then, so... And then for Jess, like really focusing on her kind of blonde, it's really just determining whether you want to look more warm or cool or what colors you're basically attracted to. Is that a and good Jess is, Yeah, and Jessica's hair, now that it already, all of the pigment is removed, you know, it is blonde, you have the flexibility to tone whatever tone you want. And so Ooh. I could take your hair warmer just in a 20 minute process. Um, obviously you'd want to maintain your roots, but once your hair is that pure white, you know, very porous color, you're able to take that level of hair and, and, and adjust the tone or the color. Um, it's just when you're wanting to add depth back in or when you're wanting to go from dark to light, there's a lot of, it's just a lot more tricky than people realize. Interesting. So do you guys have any other questions to ask Kylie regarding hair color? Because this was truly informative. <laughs> hey, I am okay. Thank you very much, Kylie. Of course. Yeah, I, yeah I'm happy. I actually didn't know this was going to be like a Q&A for me, but great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that I'm, so I've done it long enough to be able to just kind of, you know, spill all the knowledge on the spot. So. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Kylie. It was super helpful. And I hope people contact you. So actually, let's just talk about uh, color consultation lastly, after you guys have taken yeah. the class. Well, maybe I think Kylie is the only one really who's seeing clients right now, right? For, for the moment. So Kylie, how have you been able to integrate the color analysis course that you learned from me since you're a hairstylist? How has it been helpful for you? It's been helpful, one, because I get to talk about it. You know, I have clients in my chair. And so it's I am in a position to be able to market that. And lots of times it'll either be an add on service or it'll be something that um, we'll reschedule them for the next time, which has been great. Um, I think it's given me, I think the biggest takeaway when I'm looking at people's faces is truly the amount of contrast on their, between their features. Um, I think that I see more now than I've ever seen before how um, the, like the color value impacts, you know, what, what colors they should wear. That makes a lot of sense to me. I think those washed colors with low, low value makes so much more sense because those, that low value just can't support a super bright color. And so that has been really helpful as I'm determining also just what would be best for my clients as well in terms of their hair color you mean or for when mm -hmm. you do analysis yeah okay honestly both yeah, yeah. Both, both okay so i hope you're leveraging the class and like charging your clients uh so you're are you charging separate for color analysis versus like you're are you giving them some information while they're in your chair and you're going to style their hair i try really hard not to not um i think i give maybe we'll give them enough but not an, like but not too much so that they really do have to, I'll be like, oh yeah, you know, like I really have to analyze that to figure it out. Like I'd really have to sit down and analyze that with you. And that's been helpful to then spark interest. 
Great. So like the basically all the information that you gave us right now, is this something that you would talk about with the client in your chair? Because I think it's also constricted. They have like a certain amount of time to sit with you too. So would you yeah. all this information? I'll oftentimes, no. My clients oftentimes will say, I trust you. Um, but I okay. do explain a lot. I think that what makes me a, hair, a hairstylist that people trust is because I can explain why not only... I'm not going to say, no, I can't give that to you. I want them to understand why. And then their expectations. We always, we always say as a hairstylist, at least in our salon, that we want to um, under-promise and over-perform. Mm -hmm. So we give somebody the, you know, hey, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm genuine with them. I'm not sure that I'll be able to do that today. Um, and if we can get you there, that's great. But I just don't know, especially if, for a new client who have never done their hair before. You just never know. Great, wonderful tip. So again, if whoever's watching this video, contact Kylie if you have hair questions. Mm -hmm. You need color analysis, any parts of the world, Canada, Europe, wherever, you can contact these girls also to do your virtual style consultations. And that concludes this session. Thanks so much, guys. Of course. Yeah.